put it. Um, it's a great way to share these stories with our colleagues and with readers. And also as we discover new information about Leodis images, we update the image so that it reflects that. So there is a lot of information in our collections. It's just not obvious. It's sort of hidden away in various sources and we're slowly piecing it all together and using our digital platforms to raise awareness. So one example of this is an article on Maud Dighton. Uh, it's on our blog and she was the joint first woman elected as a lead city councillor. Um, we didn't really know much about her at all, but her grandson came in with a family history inquiry. And once we'd gone through that, we were like, this is too good a story to just leave in the letter we've sent to him or buried somewhere else. So we were able to put it on the blog. We also have this website, Leodis Collections. And what this does is it pulls through images from Leodis and creates mapped tours of the city. And this is where you will find our suffragette collection. Now in early 2018, if you searched for suffragettes on Leodis, you would have got two results back, only two photographs. But by late 2018, that same search brought back 20 images. We hadn't added any extra images at all. We'd just connected the dots. We'd started looking at the addresses associated with famous lead suffragettes. So where their offices were, the houses they escaped from, the first female doctor who worked out of an office in Leeds, things like that. And then we updated every single Leodis record and then pulled it through to this site. So you can essentially do a digital tour of the city and see who these women were, where they lived, which sites impacted their lives. So yeah. Also, another one is the story of the Barnbow Lasses. Now we know that in 16, 1916, 35 women died in a munitions factory explosion that's still the single largest loss of life in Leeds. And while the names were listed on a monument much later, it wasn't reported at the time due to fears over the effect on morale and the munitions site location being revealed. So because of this, all we knew about these women were their names. So for their 100th anniversary exhibition, we dug deeper. We researched local newspaper articles. We went through their obituaries. We went through government reports and we pulled together family memories to piece together a more accurate picture of the, who these 35 women were. Now, everything we've got on that is now in that blog article for anyone to view. And one of our most recently produced items is a power protest walk that we did for the 2019 Heritage Open Day. Uh, again, we mapped sites in Leeds, this time along the um, Heritage Open Day theme of power people protest. And in doing so, we made a conscious decision from the start to avoid a gender bias. Now, because of this, we now have articles on important women and the events that affected them. So Alice Mann, a radical publisher of the early 1800s, the 1812 Lady Ludd riots, the 1865 Dripping riots, the 1889 Leeds Taylor S strike, the 1908 Suffragette riot, there's the 1980 Women Against Violence Against Women march and the 1988 Leeds Women Against the Clause march. Now, there's 25 stops on this walking tour and it is worth noting that the only time women play a starring role in the event is when it is a protest one. So we are going to continue to keep joining the dots and making the information and stories we find accessible as we strive to dissolve the gender bias of Leeds history in our collections. But we just need you to know that we've got this stuff and it is here for you to come and access. And if you can't get it here, if you're stuck in your house, then email us, phone us, and we will find it and uh, get it to you another way. Thank you. Wow, wonderful. Thank you, Louise. Thank you so much. So much information and brilliant research that you can all find at Leeds Libraries. Thank you to Louise's team. Um, we will also send you the links to all of those um, online line resources, resources as well in an email after the event with the recording, which I've only just remembered to put on. So Louise, there's about half of your work on there. Sorry about that. <laughs> but we've got most of it. I'm just going to check in the chat, see if we've got any questions. Can't wait to explore all those stories of writing Leeds women. That's from Jen. Um, yeah, me too. I haven't looked at them. Um, so now we're going to go on to our next talker, who is Lucy Moore, and she's going to talk about Wikipedia. And we've also got um, Philippa, who's going to be talking as well. Um, so on you go, Lucy. Thanks. Um, is Philippa here? Or is she... 
yet. Sorry. <laughs> She'll be joining us if she's not here already. Um, <laughs> Um, so my name is Lucy um, and I work for Leeds Museums and Galleries um, and first of all I'm quite nervous because I've never done like a Zoom talk before so um, thanks for being guinea pigs um, and also um, Wikipedia and editing Wikipedia is like one of my passion projects so this is probably the first time that I've talked about editing and why it's so important that's not been in a like pub situation so <laughs> Um, so I'm really excited um, to share why I think it's so important. Um, and just so we've got an idea, um, has uh, anyone here used Wikipedia before? Yeah, show of hands, me, double hands. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's hard to avoid using Wikipedia in the world that we live in now. Um, it's the fifth most visited website in the world. Um, it has 20 billion page views um, every month um, and not just that it feeds into places like Google and so on so whenever you go online and look for something chances are some of the content that's been generated by Wikipedia will will be there um, its goal is one that I think is incredible and it's to create a place for the sum of all human knowledge and I think as someone who works in museums or people who work in libraries or people who are just within the world, you know, that's an amazing thing to be able to contribute to um, in a whole variety of different ways. Um, but just because anyone can contribute doesn't mean that everybody does. Um, and, um, and one of the the big issues uh, within Wikipedia is this issue around gender bias, not just in terms of its content, but also in terms of who's creating and curating the content that's on there as well. Uh, so most of the editors globally are male. Um, most of those male editors are white and most of them are in North America as well. Um, which means that when you take that average of 90% give or take editors who are white and male and in North America, you get one particular worldview, um, despite efforts that lots of those individuals might be making, it's still one particular worldview that's creating all of this content that's, that's online. Um, so you've got this huge website that's you know, accessed by every platform. Anyone with internet in the world is able to get to Wikipedia. Um, but the content that's on there um, may be also reflecting a lot of the biases of who's making the content. Um, of the 10% of people who aren't men who are editing Wikipedia, um, from, and there's lots of different surveys and slightly different kind of um, ratios and things. Um, but 9% are women uh, and then the other 1% is people who um, are kind of non-binary or within a kind of uh, different sort of gender category. Um, and there's been quite a lot of research that's been done into like, why is this? Um, and I think that it's really a, a, like a huge kind of like intersectional problem in a way. Um, obviously women are clever and intelligent and we can all use tech. But I think we also have a lot more and a lot of different demands on our time. So uh, I think free time is an issue. You know, um, there's lots of been quite a few surveys recently while we're all in quarantine about how uh, women who are also in universities or in academia are, pr are publishing much less than men. And I imagine it's because women are doing more of the work at home. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else the solution could be. Um, but there's also um, an environment kind of traditionally within Wikipedia that's perhaps not been, uh, that has been identified as not being as welcoming to women. Um, and uh, it's what that it can still have quite a sort of combative um, approach. Um, so I'll go in and I'll be like, oh, hi, please, could you just give me a little bit of help on this? And you'll get a very like, no answer. So I think sometimes some of the soft skills that 
we welcome each other into different communities with perhaps aren't as present there as they perhaps could be. Um, but with this kind of, I don't want to put the, the pressure on women to all go and be editors. It's a much bigger issue than that. Everyone needs to be thinking more broadly outside their own kind of range of interests and thinking in a very kind of um, concentrated manner about how you can address not just the kind of gender imbalance, um, but for where there is an imbalance in the representation of gender on Wikipedia, it is multiplied for people from BAME backgrounds and also people uh, who are LGBT or from any other kind of marginalised community. So I think it's really important if you're thinking of getting into editing Wikipedia um, to just think about those broader questions as well. Um, you know, am I, I might have this total passion, but how can I focus those bits of my passion I want to share so that I'm telling the broadest range of stories as possible? Uh, one of the uh, kind of legacies of this sort of uh, imbalance in uh, in gender on Wikipedia um, is really obvious um, in the biographical pages on there. Uh, so uh, of all of the biographies that are on English Wikipedia at the moment, uh, only 18% of them are about women. And we, we all know that women have done amazing things in the past. Louise has just shown us some like incredible stories. Um, but it goes back to her very first point about how women have been traditionally not written about or have been written out of histories um, because Wikipedia depends on you being able to provide evidence for what you want to say and you have to provide evidence that um, that is kind of a, a secure secondary resource. So you might know about this woman who did these amazing things through like your family history or your family tradition, but if she's not been written about, if she's not in a newspaper, if she's not anywhere, it's really hard to prove her, her notability within Wikipedia. Um, but there are ways that you can think creatively about that, you can combat that. There's an amazing project in India that's basically um, creating new oral history projects about this kind of intangible heritage and then specifically using them as a trusted source on Wikipedia. So nothing is, is, can, is a blockage, you just have to think your way around. <laughs> um, so, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes just a second. I said I was nervous. <laughs> um, so how can we avoid this kind of weirdly skewed world where information is perpetuating lots of biases, lots of biases within our, 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 our countries and within our communities? Um, it's, there's lots of stuff you can do. Um, so you can edit and that can be from making a tiny typo change to creating new pages. Um, but there are other things that you can do as well. So um, Wikipedia is just part of a family um, of organisations that comes under Wikimedia. Um, and one of the really important things that you can do um, is adding images to Wikimedia Commons. And I'm just going to share my screen now so you can see that if you've not, if you've not seen it already. So just bear with me. I don't get to share a screen in the pub, so this is quite exciting. <laughs> Uh, oh no, hang on. Yeah. yeah. I'll just minimise everyone else so you can't see each other. Uh, uh, blah. So this is Wikimedia Commons. Um, and this is such an amazing resource because um, it's where you can upload images that can be freely reused um, by uh, anyone, anywhere. Um, it's not necessarily a space for you to, for me to put images from our museum collection up, but it's definitely an image of space for me to add images that I might have taken of a well-known woman that I might have met, of something that's really interesting um, in local history around me, um, and it's a place where all these images can be reposited and then they can be used by anyone anywhere, whether it's on Wikipedia or off Wikipedia. But 
adding to commons is a really amazing way of getting your experiences reflected um, in this wider family of information. Um, so uh, one thing that I've been doing um, is adding kind of images that I've seen of um, uh, sort of COVID-19 in, in my local community when I've been on my daily exercise walk so that it's recorded somewhere so that people can find it and reuse it um, and so on. So if there's one thing that you do, adding images to commons is, is a fantastic thing. Um, you can also, so here's the Wiki, Wikipedia homepage. Wikipedia is available in tons of different languages. I can't remember the number off the top of my head. Um, and you can translate either using Google Translate or if you speak another language, doing a translation of a page is a fantastic thing to do. Um, you can, and here is the Wikipedia homepage. Um, I'm logged in here. This is me, LAJM Moore. Um, feel free to find me on Wikipedia. I love making friends. Um, but you can make uh, edits. You don't have to be logged in. You can do it um, by pressing the edit button. Um, and one of the things that you can do is when you're looking at a woman's page, uh, you can think about the order of the information that's there. Uh, so uh, for lots of women, how they're written about on Wikipedia is that they are written about in terms of who they were married to or who they were the family of. So sometimes on a page you'll see a person's name, a little intro, and you'll, it will describe their family first. And a really easy thing that you can do just to make a simple edit is to move the family section below her career section so that when people see this person, the first thing they're reading about is what they actually did not who their family were. Um, another really good thing to do is to link um, different Wikipedia pages uh, to other ones as well. Um, I'm sure we've all gone down like total Wikipedia sort of wormholes where you click through and you click through and you click through. Um, adding those, they're called hyperlinks, adding them in is a really uh, important and amazing thing to do. Um, and all of these things that we can do in terms of gender in particular, you can also do in terms of representing, you know, your local area, your interest. Um, so they're applicable across different areas of, of Wikipedia. Um, at Leeds Museums, we're particularly interested um, in what we can do to support people understanding the history of Leeds better, but also sharing stories of our sites and our collections better as well. Uh, so one thing that we've been doing uh, is setting up a space within Wikipedia where, you, where people who want to edit can come and get ideas that are based on our exhibitions or on our collections, uh, and also a space where people will hopefully be able to kind of talk to each other, share resources and so on. Um, it is a work in progress, um, but please do come and pay us a visit um, and if you need any help with this afterwards please please get in touch because I'm running through things quite quite quickly um, but um, I think editing is an absolutely incredible thing to do. Uh, so we've got various things, this is our home page. Um, this project, there's lots of different projects within Wikipedia, this one's about Leeds but we've tried to make it quite intersectional in its approach um, but it also builds on what was already in the project. Um, but we've added a goal of particularly increasing the representation of women, uh, people with LGBT, BAME, or people with disabilities within the city. There's an area where you can discuss different things. Uh, and then what we've been doing in particular at Leeds Museums um, is adding in uh, suggestions for things that you can do. Uh, so if you click on the Museums and Galleries tab, uh, one of the things that's really struck me in my editing and my work at the museum is that we put exhibitions on, there's loads of amazing research, there's loads of things that you, that you, that you new research to share with people and it's fantastic that they're in exhibitions, but where do they go after the exhibition? Often they just go back into like our saved files, they're not published really anywhere, there might be some blog posts, um, but there's no kind of often there's not a legacy for these for these projects. So what we've done 
uh, at Leeds Industrial Museum, we've got an exhibition on called Leeds to Innovation. So we've made a list of some people uh, that it might be good to make pages about. Um, and Philip is going to talk about a couple of the people from there in a minute. Uh, we've got an exhibition at Abbey House Museum that's about music, uh, so we, we've got a whole list of suggestions of uh, women who are either featured in our, in our collection and are something to do with music, um, or are women from Leeds to do with music, and there's a whole list of pages. So these are pages that already exist, uh, but need expanding. Uh, so they're a really good place to start uh, and we've got some draft pages set up as well um, so you could go in and do your own research and find out a bit more about these people um, and it's amazing when you start looking into women's lives it's just incredible the things that people have done and the, the things that people don't have the credit for um, and I think giving women this credit it, through Wikipedia through something that is accessed and translated the world over is probably the most activist thing that I do um, in certainly in my like life at home <laughs> definitely and then based on some of the things that have happened at City Museum we're looking more on people who might who have uh, come to Leeds from other countries um, or who are to do with disabilities um, and at Leeds Art Gallery we're just working on a little section at the moment um, to get some of the information about some of the women artists in our collections uh, so we've got some lists so in a little while we'll have a list of um, people that we might suggest that people might, might want to make pages about um, doo -doo -doo. Sorry, I'm just managing to click on the wrong board. Um, so there's lots of places that you can go and sort of get some ideas. Um, I was really pleased that uh, Louise uh, mentioned the blog because it's here as a potential place to go. And um, the project is in progress, so there will be more edits on here. But it'd be great to have a list of things that Leeds libraries have researched that maybe ought to be on Wikipedia too. Um, and there's other events and resources as well. Um, but I think what would be really interesting for everyone now um, is probably um, for Philippa to take over uh, and talk through some of the pages that uh, she's worked on recently. Um, Philippa has been volunteering with Leeds Museums um, to do some of this Wikipedia work. If that's okay with you, Philippa. Yeah, thanks, Lucy. Could you just share the Elizabeth Beecroft page, please? Yeah. So this was the first page that I worked on. Um, so I went along to a Wikithon um, event at uh, Leeds Industrial Museum that um, Lucy organised and we looked around the exhibition and I immediately thought, yes, I'd love to research more about Elizabeth Beecroft. She already had a page on Wikipedia, but it was very much like Lucy said, it listed her as a wife of a farmer, basically. Um, it had a little bit of information about the fact that she ran the forge but it didn't really specify what she did and the really sort of like innovative pioneering thing that she did. Um, I was really lucky because at that event Lucy had brought along books about that mentioned her so I quickly took some photographs and could use those when I was back at home. Um, and I would say that um, from my experience, I've done three pages now, two about women and one about a man. And um, the second page about a man, I did the first draft and it actually got rejected because I didn't have enough sources. So I think that would be the thing that I want to um, get across most today, that make sure you've got lots and lots of sources that you can put in. And it's not just books. I mean, obviously, like Google Books is really useful. Um, but newspapers as well. And Lucy really kindly shared their access to the British newspaper archive. Um, so I actually found out quite a lot of information um, on, the, on the man that I was working on. He was a Jewish immigrant to Leeds um, and um, set up a sort of textile industry. And so I actually found a lot of information there on the newspapers rather than in books but in terms of Betty yes there was lots of information um, published about her there was also a diary that she'd written so that was really interesting to go through and yeah like um, Lucy was saying I divided up the um, the entry so that you can really see you know what she did um, 
when she was the manager of the forge um, and then some things about other bits of her life and also her legacy so I've put in the fact that she was in this exhibition that she had that she is in this exhibition so kind of to give some sort of legacy to that to that work um, so that was that one and then the Florence Taylor Hildred page which is the the most recent page I've worked on um, so this was a new page she didn't have an entry at all um, and I did a sort of google search for information about her um, I did find a few sources so I thought right I can go ahead but I also contacted the curator of the exhibition and he put me in touch with somebody from the Leeds Astronomical, Astronomical Society who was really generous and just shared loads of information sent me JPEGs of books that I couldn't access through Google Books. Um, he also arranged for the photos to be uploaded to Wikimedia um, with the correct um, credits. Um, so in terms of that sort of collaboration aspect that is possible with Wikipedia, this is a real sort of um, good example of that. Um, so yeah, so I was able to kind of build up quite a good um, amount of information about her. Um, I would just say with adding um, adding images to Wikimedia, you do have to be careful around credits and things like that. So it is also it is always worth kind of following the correct trails so that you you aren't using images that are um, you know against copyright um, restrictions and things like that. Um, so yeah, so basically um, I've been doing this pretty much since lockdown began um, in a couple of hours on a Saturday morning and, you know, occasional here and there. So it's a really good thing to do just, you know, to keep, go, keep doing some interesting bits and pieces and you can keep adding to the drafts. You don't have to, when you're doing a, when you're writing a draft you can start it then you can go back to it you actually have a choice to um when you submit it for review and then wikipedia will review it and say whether they're going to accept it or whether they're going to reject it and you need to do more changes um, and i'd also say that it's really easy to edit wikipedia as well if you haven't had experience of doing it because you can edit it in um it's basically just like writing in Word. So you don't, so when you choose edit, you can choose um, whether you do it in a, in a kind of like computer speak or as in the visual editing. So I always just choose the visual editing because it's much easier to, to work with. And um, yeah, you can just choose like whether you're gonna put it as a paragraph or a header and things like that. So it's pretty easy. And also doing the citations are easy once you get, uh, the hang of it um, and I think that's probably about it <laughs> that's amazing um I think one of the things that I loved about these pages um is that they're women who are really extraordinary within Leeds but particularly with Florence and um, when she emigrated to Sacramento she conducted she was the first woman to conduct a marriage ceremony there you know why has why why has she not been present in the sum of all human knowledge already you know and I think it's here where you can make really really kind of um, firm differences in in how people understand women's lives for example or LGBT lives or whatever um, because you're, you're you're spreading you know the the good word of um, about these individuals um, and that's really really important. Yeah and um, I always I always try to link wherever I can so I link to places or dates or whatever themes yeah. and things like that yeah um so another thing that you can do if you're thinking about editing is you can join our Leeds wiki project um but if you're thinking particularly that you want to get involved with editing about women um then there's a project on wikipedia that's been going for a few years now um called um women in red um, and it's all about addressing the, the, the bias in gender. Uh, so there's a really supportive community there um, of very, very experienced editors um, who are really nice and really kind. Um, and they have themes every month and there's advice for new editors and 
um, it's a really great way of sort of um, getting involved but having people um, there to kind of uh, I wouldn't say like hold your hand but to be there to call upon for support um, if you need it and there's loads of other projects as well so there's projects for kind of everything you can conceive of um, which is really wonderful um, so kind of whatever you're interested in that there, there will be a place where you can find um, that support um, there's a few questions that um, might be helpful to answer so about um, whether people whether it's sort of combative so in my experience even when I was rejected I didn't feel it was combative um, I think if you're working on pages where people are really famous, I think there might be more of a sort of like argument between different editors. But I think on these pages, as yet, I haven't come across somebody who's like come and sort of deleted all my stuff or anything like that. Um, and I think also somebody asked about um, what's the best way to start editing it. Well, Lucy was really helpful. She just gave me a few pages to look at. So I just followed that. And then in terms of the draft pages, yes, people can see it and they can also edit it. So it's just like Wikipedia, you know, it's not like it's your draft and then you release it to the world. Different people can work on it. And um, so it can be sort of collaborative. And my next woman is Lynette Willoughby, who is um, another woman. She's a scientist, um, contemporary scientist, much more contemporary than the other women I've worked on. Um, again, in the Leeds to Innovation exhibition. Yeah. That was me squeeing. Um, <laughs> yeah, are there any other questions? Um, sorry, I've lost the questions box. Um, uh, I think just going back to that kind of point about it being quite combative, um, not in my experience, once I, so when I first started editing, I had. A, quite an unpleasant experience where um, some editors were I don't really know why but they were quite suspicious of me editing and kind of uh, made a sort of mild threat um, which I then reported to Wikimedia and uh, it was like immediately dealt with and, and, and shut down um, and I think like you said, Philip, it's, it's really important to stress that not everyone has that experience as well. Um, but now that I know, it sounds a bit wrong, but now I know how to play the game a bit more. Um, it's, I don't have that kind of experience. Um, or I haven't for a, a while. And I've been editing for just over a year, so I'm still quite new as well. Lucy, do you want me to go over some of the questions now or do you want to keep going? No, no, questions are good. I'm, I'm aware that... it's like lunchtime's ticking on and I want everyone's voice <laughs> <It's been> heard. <laughs> wonderful so far. I'm really enjoying it. Um, so um, we've got one from Kat um, and she's asking, um, do you think that, uh, do you think that part of the lack of soft skills within digital communities comes from people positioning themselves as most knowledgeable about a subject instead of being a collaborator? So, what Ooh. Is your <laughs> um, I don't know whether I'm qualified to talk about other tech <laughs> communities at all. Um, I think, in terms of what I've noticed from Wikipedia, it works best when people see themselves as part of a collaborative community. Um, so, I read someone who is a more experienced editor said you should never talk about a page that you've done or that you've finished but you should talk about, about one that you've started or expanded and use quite positive language I think where some of the kind of um, negativity comes is when um, people perhaps do set themselves up as I know this or I want to be the person that does this um, and maybe that doesn't work so well with um, the collaboration, which is at the heart of what of what the encyclopedia is. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Um, so you've asked, what's the best way to start editing Wikipedia, Lucy? Mm -hmm. um, so there's loads of tutorials on YouTube. Um, 
uh, I'd really recommend having a look at some of those because they show you how to kind of go from the very start and make your first your very first edits. Um, I'd start by uh, just really simply looking for typos, things like that, just to kind of get a sense of um, how you make the change, how you kind of um, add or subtract things, um, and then kind of go from there. My first edits were just, um, in fact, I can show you my first edit. Um, which, um, so I learned to edit at a Wikathon that was held at Leeds Libraries um, for LGBT History Month last year. Um, and we were adding bits to this page, LGBT Culture in Leeds. And my first edit was just like a one sentence, which is this one here. In January 2019, Leeds-based brewery anthology created a new beer to celebrate LGBT History Month with 10p from every pint donated to Stonewall. Because um, I was, I thought it just thought it was really important that that the kind of sort of <laughs> the beer community um, was represented, but also that it was um, a kind of again a kind of local. Um, uh, business that was contributing as part of LGBT History Month. Um, so just adding in little sentences here and there. Um, sometimes you might be reading something and you might have then gone to check it on Wikipedia and it's not there. Um, and then you can kind of add a sentence in, but just make sure you've got your reference. So my reference is here um, and it's from um, the Untapped website. Um, so you just have to make sure regardless of how well you know a subject and how well you know what you think to be true to add those references in um just so then no one can argue with you because you've got a source it's a good one and um it's there fabulous so um kat also man uh, mentioned the west yorkshire queer stories oral histories project and if that mm. could be used as a secondary source i'm guessing mm. that. so yeah. That's super interesting because the oral history is on there. Oral history is a primary source. Um, so it's technically kind of not allow, uh, allowed on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're talking about it in terms of it being kind of an oral history source, you can definitely reference it. Um, but I think it just has to be qualified a little bit. Um, so um but when things are written but where it will become stronger as an archive of um lgbt experience in west yorkshire is when other people start writing about it so when it's got these kind of like secondary publications so people drawing on the archive kind of makes it a stronger source which mm -hmm. might feel a bit counterintuitive because it's a person saying a thing but I think what Wikipedia is keen on is that is that idea of analysis when it comes to primary sources. Um, but there is also a draft for a page for West Yorkshire Queer Stories itself, um, which is uh, kind of in the draft space at the moment, but would welcome people to, to work on it, definitely. That's fantastic. Um, Victoria's put in um, some links. There's two references. Um, uh, pages, let's see, these are random pages about men that don't have a lot of references, so mm. look at that. Um, and then Jude is asking, do you think Wikipedia actively engaging with the idea that they are not representative of women and minorities? Yeah, definitely. So the Wikimedia Foundation, which kind of overarches over Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons and uh, all the kind of affiliated sites, definitely recognises that there's a bias in there. Um, mm -hmm. And our, what their team is very small, so it's not they can't necessarily address the kind of huge inequalities within the content, but they are um, really keenly supporting people to become editors, um, initiatives to um, push the bias more and more, uh, push against the bias more and more. Um, so I think, in fact, on there's an article that's gender bias in Wikipedia. Yeah. That's the top one. And that kind of, you know, it talks about how the foundation 
you know, agrees with the criticisms about it. Um, and there, and I think where the communities of different editors are coming together, um, they're not all the, the editors who are uh, changing kind of views on gender within Wikipedia, they're not all women, you know, men are involved in that as well. Um, Non-binary people are involved in that as well. So it is um, something that kind of everyone can contribute to. But of course, with so many more existing editors, they should maybe be doing a bit more. But um, the more new people who are freshly aware of how you can really target your contributions, um, the, the more bias within Wikipedia will incrementally change um, and that's really important but it is a massive task um, with so many articles the potent the percentages for example for biographies have, have crept up over the last couple of years by two percent um, but it's not kind of a, an enormous surge but the incremental mm -hmm. change will move more and more I feel certain fabulous I think I've got through most of the questions. <laughs> Ace. Ooh, I've got something. Oh, yeah, fabulous. Um, and um, Victoria seems to be your biggest fan. Have you, have <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, so I can <laughs> say hi to everyone. <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> it's been quite strange talking at my computer. Um, but yeah, it's really nice to see everyone. Fabulous. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so I hope that's inspired us all to become a little bit more active in um, editing Wikipedia, but also more active on our use of the internet rather than just being consumers, because we can make a difference, specifically if we're um, not men basically oh, yeah. so. and also it's it's that thing if if you see something on wikipedia and you go oh why is it not saying that add it in like mm -hmm. one of the reasons i started editing was i kept seeing things to do with the first world war that weren't quite quite right because i'm really interested in it and then i was like oh and then someone pointed out well you, you can change it and that was amazingly empowering mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah. That blows my mind so <laughs> email like i'm really happy to help people if you'd like help like edit <laughs> fabulous um so i think we'll finish there everyone thank you so much for joining us thank you lucy you've been amazing thank you philippa i think she's had to go she's got children yeah. at home um but thank you very much and louise you were amazing as well um it's been absolutely lovely and it's been great seeing everyone who's joined in um, and we hope you found it interesting. We will send you the links, uh, the recording, and please join us for next week's talk, which is from the British Library. And that's looking at the Discovering um, Books for Children website um, with LV and Andrea there. And it's talking about the research behind it as well. So it should be really interesting. So thank you. See you all later. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>